What's going on guys? I just wanted to hop on here and give you some expectations for this video. Uh, it's going to be a super raw video of me essentially giving you what I think the landscape for Amazon sellers uh, and e-commerce sellers in general for the rest of 2024 will be and 2025 and how I'm approaching all of that with my own brand. Um, so the goal with this video is to have it be super straightforward, um, have minimal cuts and <laughs> just talk to you guys, show you some things that I'm looking at. Um, and one of the things that I'm really enjoying just about creating content on YouTube is the fact that it is so like I'm approaching it just like super carefree and not putting too much pressure on myself and the content that I create. And by doing that, I'm having a little bit more, a lot more fun, um, just showing you guys my process for all of my companies, how I'm going about things, the way that I'm thinking about things, and it's just fun to share. So hopefully you guys can get some value out of this. Uh, but I figured I would go ahead and kind of show you guys how I'm approaching our new Amazon brand and our plans for it through 2024 and approaching 2025. Berkeley, of course, wants to be part of the video. So this is our brand, Gambling Golf. We launched it in December um, on Amazon and it sold out in three weeks. So we launched it, we had a thousand units sold out in three weeks. And after that, we were sold out of our inventory for about a month and a half. And in that interim of when we were sold out, Teddy and I, my business partner on this brand, we're trying to figure out how we could also expand the brand, knowing that Amazon is a great platform to sell on. Um, but one of the limitations that Amazon gives us as sellers is just customer data. We don't have access to anything to retarget customers um, or even no information about the customer really at all. So one of the things that Teddy is really good at is Shopify and running social content and you know helping brands grow D to C. And it's something that I have literally zero experience in. So um, when Teddy and I started working together, one of our goals was to always expand to Shopify, but we didn't necessarily know that we'd be doing it as early on as we are. So one of the focuses that we've been recently going through and trying to build out and I can't really take any credit for I can't take any credit for this at all, actually, is our Shopify store. Let me pull it up here. So here it is <clears throat> in all of its glory. Let me make sure that this is focused in. So here it is. And this is our Shopify store. It's super clean. It's simple, which is pretty much all we need for a single Amazon product like the one that we're selling. Uh, but it gives customers a clear idea of what we're selling. It's really aesthetic has a really clear brand to it. You can obviously tell our brand fonts, our brand colors, what we do, um, you know, what our call is, and how our brand is supposed to be perceived. So for most Amazon brands that I see, um, some of them, you know, I'm not saying that ours is perfect by any means, but some of them, you know, are lacking branding which makes it hard to make a transition to Shopify. And that's why we always wanted to retain good branding, a good voice, you know, clear brand fonts, um, a clear brand aesthetic. And I think that having all of those things is really helping us make the transition to Shopify. And it's making things just a lot easier. It makes everything look more aesthetic. Um, and so now we're going through the process of setting up something called Amazon MCF. Amazon MCF stands for multi-channel fulfillment and it's an app inside of Amazon that actually allows us to fulfill all of our Amazon orders or Shopify orders, excuse me, with Amazon. So it's, it's like having a warehouse through Shopify, but we're just using Amazon. So we're, able, we're still able to take advantage of some of the FBA features that we love, you know, Amazon picking, packing and shipping all of our orders, but we don't have to pay the ridiculous Amazon fee and granted we don't have Amazon hosting our product on their platform if we're on Shopify, but we're an Amazon seller, so we still have that. And I think that that's going to be the future of Amazon sellers uh, and people that are on Amazon and seeing success there that aren't on D2C and just using Amazon as the fulfillment channel. Um, I think that it's going to be a really interesting thing that we see here. And it's not like it's necessarily a new thing. Amazon MCF has been something that's been around for a long time. But as these newer e-commerce brands are coming to the surface, and it's something that vitamin brands and household brands have done on Amazon for a super long time, they've launched products on Amazon, 
then launch Shopify and use MCF to fulfill it. But it's, it's something that hasn't really drifted over to other categories and niches as much as I thought it would. So transitioning into the rest of 2024, quarter three, quarter four, and then quarter, um, and then, you know, 2025, I think that brands are really going to lean in on having Amazon be their fulfillment, their main fulfillment source, but still selling on, on D2C. And it's interesting because in the past, we always used to compare Shopify and we would compare Amazon as if they're these two monster enemies. Uh, and lately, we've actually been seeing them integrate each other's work um, in each other's platforms a lot. Now, Amazon isn't necessarily going to condone, you know, or would rather have you sell on Shopify than Amazon. That's not the case. But I think that they're realizing more now that it's just one of those, it's inevitable that brands are going to want to sell on both. So I think that it's really cool that, you know, there are apps that are hosted by these major platforms such as Amazon and Shopify, and they can integrate seamlessly together and not have to use a third party app, um, which is what the M Amazon MCF app is. So I think that it's going to cut down a lot on the future of how businesses use warehousing, um, store their units, fulfill their units. I've got a lot, a lot of clients now from my Amazon agency, Swifton, that store their, all their products in-house. Um, and then they fulfill their units you know, with their team. But with that, you've got your team overhead. You've got the cost of your warehouse. You've got the cost of boxes, labels, tape. Um, all of that, which is a huge overhead cost for e-commerce businesses. So if you're able to cut down on that and have Amazon fulfill all of your units and pay maybe a little bit more for that fulfillment than you usually would because, you know, someone else is doing it for you. I think that it's going to be worth it for a lot of these e-commerce businesses that are trying to scale a lot faster because there isn't that overhead that you typically would have in your traditional warehouse environment. And I think that's the cool thing that we're experiencing between Shopify and Amazon right now. And that's how we're approaching gambling golf um, with Amazon and with Shopify because they are two platforms that are just absolute beasts. There's immense benefits to both of them. Um, and for us as a brand to sit on the sidelines of one or the other, it just doesn't really make much sense. You know, there's billions of transactions that happen on Amazon every single year. Same thing for Shopify. And so for brands to be hyper specific on one of them and not the other, it just it isn't a formula that makes much sense to me right now. It, you know, before it did make sense, you know, because they weren't necessarily working as much together as they are now. But since it's such a seamless plug and play between the two major platforms, the two biggest e-commerce platforms or hosts in the world, it's such a no-brainer for me to to start to transition and think of my brands and the growth of my brands in that way. And I think that more and more brands, just your typical um, everyday brands that you see on Amazon are going to adopt the same method. And I'm excited to see what happens with it. But that is something that we're doing for Gambling Golf. Um, this is, like I said, a super raw video, no cuts. And I like hopping on here and just having like a no pressure way of communi communicating with you guys and telling you my thoughts and how I'm approaching growing a brand on Amazon and growing a brand through Shopify and different strategies that I'm using uh, to do that. So if you enjoy this type of style, this type of video, you know, it's the way that I'm looking at it or the way that I'm picturing it is like people driving in their car and then just listening to this as if it's like a podcast or you um, they're eating dinner and just having this in the background. I mean, that's what I do with some of my, some of my favorite creators on YouTube are creators with like 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 subscribers that do this sort of thing um, because it's the most valuable and it's the most relatable. And I hope that I'm able to come across um, in that way to you and you're able to take something away from these types of videos. Uh, but if you did watch this, just please let me know what you think. I appreciate you a ton for watching this. Um, even if 10 to 15 people watch this video i appreciate you because um it's just it's so cool for me to come on here and explain my thoughts and my processes and not have any pressure to get views and that's exactly what i'm doing with these uh so again i appreciate you a lot for being here if you have any questions at all drop them below i'll answer all of them and if you're an amazon seller or a shopify seller good luck and let me know what your thoughts are uh, with 
fulfillment in how you're approaching it uh, in 2024 and moving into 2025. So thank you guys again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.